guys on this beautiful morning? Well, we are parked at a very busy truck stop. I was kind of worried. I didn't think we'd find a place to park last night. That's right. I didn't start the trip off with you guys today, or yesterday. And I do apologize for that. I'll make it up to you, I promise. It was just too darn cold, too darn snowy. And just didn't... Well, I guess it just didn't really light my fire yesterday. But we did have a problem moving across last night. It seems I must have grabbed some bad fuel at some point, somewhere, or maybe last week when I ran the tanks down really low. I sucked something up in the tanks or in the filters. Needless to say, we get to replace fuel filters, and that's why I carry extra fuel filters with me, just in case I need to replace them out on the road. And then on top of that, I was able to find a radiator cap. I would have never figured finding a radiator cap would be as hard as what it was, but we did find one. So, we have to add some antifreeze to it, and hopefully it keeps it inside there this time. First, let's go ahead and get started with replacing our fuel filters. Now in a perfect world, I would not need this because those filters should just twist right off. But a lot of times when you get your truck serviced, you ask them to change your fuel filters. I don't let them grease it because they just don't put enough grease in it. And so I just have them change the oil and the oil filter and sometimes the fuel filters. But in, like I said, in a perfect world, I would not need a filter wrench to take my filters off. And if I do need a filter wrench to take them off, they shouldn't really come that hard. So we're going to see how hard these are to get off. I know they're already too hard to come off with the hand. Let's just hope they're not too hard to get off with a wrench, because then things get interesting. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why you always change your own fuel filters. Never let a shop do it. These are on way too tight. See, that's the inside of a fuel filter. Now usually if your fuel filters are plugging up, usually you can only get away with just replacing this one. But it has been, well there's probably at least 15,000 miles on these filters. Under normal circumstances, I can get more than that out of them though, but we're going to change both of them. Well, they're both on. We're gonna wipe them down and get them dry for I can hand tighten them. 
tight with my hands. That's how a shop should do it. There you go, guys. That's changing a fuel filter on a big kitty cat motor. Now let's go get the antifreeze put in, clean this mess up, and we can talk some more. Well, we let it run for a while, make sure there's no air in the fuel system. Well, like I said earlier, guys, I just, I couldn't start a video yesterday because the simple fact, you know, I walked out the door of the house, it was 17 degrees with four inches of snow on the ground, and we already know how much I love winter, so that wasn't really going to be an option right now. Because I just was not in the right mood. I wasn't mad, wasn't crabby. I was a little stressed out about stuff I didn't need to be stressing out about, but I was still stressed out about them. The problem is, I make these lists of stuff I want to get done when I'm home. And then when I, when you get weather like that, that keeps me inside. And there's stuff I could have been doing inside too. But I didn't get as much done as what I wanted to. We did go fishing. We still did celebrate Easter the way we wanted to. Um, got the dogs cleaned up. But, you know, I got little stuff. You know, I want to fix the wood floor in the house. Um, I got to make a uh, recycle project with little bud. I got to get my new little hobby started. And I didn't get those things done on the inside when the weather was crappy on the outside. But when I make these lists and I don't get them done, that puts stress on me that it's what I call stupid stress because just because I didn't get my own personal list done, I worry about it. That's anxiety that person doesn't really need to have right now with everything else going on on top of it. Well guys, what we're hauling today is the exact same thing as what we were hauling last time I talked to you about when we were trucking. We were hauling products that go inside of what they call lunch makers. If you're wondering what a lunch maker is, a lunch maker is basically the exact same thing as a Lunchable, I think. I've never had a lunch maker. But that's what we're hauling. It's products that go inside a lunch maker. Little pizza rounds pieces of ham, cheese, uh, pizza sauce, stuff like that. And guess where we're going? We're running from Sioux City, Iowa. Ready? We're going back out to Tar Hill, North Carolina. You know, where I had my temper tantrum and drove off. So we're going to go see if they can remember us. Chances are they will. I was just there last week. So that's what we're hauling and that's where we're going. Right now we're pulling out of, I, I'm going to butcher the name. It's Mascauta, Illinois. Mascauta, Illinois. It's just east of St. Louis, Missouri. about two or three hundred miles here then we'll stop again and check on that antifreeze issue that we're having but as for right now the fuel issue we were having last night when I was running across the great states is taken care of and the truck is burned like a kitten like it's supposed to other than that ladies and gentlemen I say we go ahead and Kick the tires and light the fires and get our butt on the interstate. We've been stopped long enough already.
Well, we've made it just east of uh, Knoxville, Tennessee right now. We've got a couple climbs out of the way, nothing too big. We got snowed on a little bit there for a little bit too. But I want to see what this radiator is doing. See if I have a massive leak on my hands or what's going on. I am going to spin you around. Ooh, look at that. We're looking dry. But it coming out the overflow tube is actually pretty nice because that means the cap is working. And I'm betting you anything when I check it tonight or check it tomorrow morning, the level is going to be just, it's going to look a pinch low, but it's not going to be low. And once we stop and get her washed up, which we'll probably do on our way home, I think we're going to run into some rain tonight. Once I get it washed up, I'm betting all that water, or antifreeze, you know, stains all over the bumper and all over the leaf spring there go away. As of right now, I got some food in me. Morgan packed my fridge up again for me this week. She did real good. Personally, I think she's going stir crazy from being inside the house so long or being home so much. And technically, yeah, inside the house. It's been cold. We have had maybe two, three days, nice days this month while they've been in the in lockdown, I guess. So she might be going a little crazy. She was kind of crazy to start with, though. But I can say that because I don't think Warden watches these. All right, guys. We got a truck to drive. We have... I want to go another two, at least another 200 miles today. I want to make it a solid 700 mile day. That way, when we wake up tomorrow morning, we only have maybe one, maybe 150 miles to get to where we're going. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Well, let's talk about parking really quick like everybody's got the food part covered really good you know the restaurants are doing good at bringing the food out the trucks um, the the takeouts in the way in the wise of takeouts and in the wise of uh, drive-throughs um, DOT's treating us pretty good out here but parking and I know Every time you talk about a truck driver or talk to a truck driver, they might want to say something about parking. You know, it's always an issue. Right now, you've heard me say a few times in my past vlogs that there is an insane amount of trucks out here right now. This, I'm not a veteran at driving a truck. I've been out here long enough to be considered a truck driver, I guess you could call it. This is the most amount of trucks I have ever seen on the interstates. I mean, it is insane, the amount of trucks. If you're not in a truck stop or a rest area by 3 to 6 p.m., your chances of getting to park there are slim to almost absolutely none. So then you start parking, well, like me. I like to park on on-ramps every once in a while, so you start looking for those. Well, before this whole thing started with the world, I never had any troubles finding spots there, so I never whined about parking. I could always find a spot on, a, on an on-ramp, you know? Right now, not even the case. Those are even full. So it, that's the biggest part that's really where I'm seeing a huge difference out here on the road is the mass amount of trucks out here mixed with, there's just nowhere to put them. That was my mistake. I went past Knoxville. When I got into the gorge and I started thinking, where are you gonna park? 
you know there's once you hit the hills there's no on or off ramps that you can go to every truck stop is guaranteed full by this time of night and last week I parked at a gas station slash I don't know what it was it was a mom pa little gas station and I about lost my truck in one of their holes so I'm not going back there so I found a spot I'm gonna have to show you the spot in the morning so I can't show you tonight you wouldn't be able to see it let's just say I'm not gonna roll out of bed tonight and the brakes work very good at least I hope so where I could have an interesting ride at some point tonight but I found a spot but yeah that's the biggest part right now I'm recognizing is the lack of parking and I know like I said when I started this little ranch is every truck driver is gonna whine about parking parking your rates rates they are what they are luckily I run a lot of dedicated stuff so I don't have to worry about the rate wars that go on with people who go off of load boards if you're wondering what load boards are well I'll tell you later <laughs> but parking it's it's rough it is rough but like I said we found a parking spot I'm gonna sleep here tonight and when I get up I'll show you the parking spot it's it's interesting we're on a hard surface that that's a good part all right guys I hope everybody's staying healthy staying happy you know and just remember you run your household no one else runs your household so don't let anyone tell else tell you that your household is safe to do something that you don't feel like your household is safe to do so you stick to it stick to your guns and just be nice be nice to people <laughs> you know we're, we're past we're getting to the point where it's getting past the everybody loves everybody we're getting to the point to where everybody's starting to bicker at each other about what we're going to do next in this world so do what you're going to do do what you feel safe doing be happy healthy and most of all be safe, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning.